Welcome back to the Denver Open Series. I'm Glenn Jones, and I'm here on the sideboard being joined by Eric Clark. How's it going? Eric's an ultras for this event. He's been an ultras for a number of events. Uh, I don't remember what your next one is, but I know you were also in Kansas City. Yes, I was in Kansas City two weeks ago. Um, my next one, I want to say... Jeez, I don't even... <laughs> There's so many. Um, I think it's Kamikaze Con, I think. Stan Lee's convention. Yep. So that'll be good. I believe it's in L.A. Yes. So that should have a huge crowd. I'll also be in that one, so it should be good fun. Awesome. But we're going to talk today a little bit about your work in the Mesh community with Altering. Absolutely. Uh, you're becoming one of the better known Altruists in the circuit. <laughs> well, I appreciate a lot that. Of these <laughs> I certainly like a lot of your stuff. Very humbling. Even Thank though you. I haven't yet purchased one. I'm still deciding. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you swear, did you start with Altering, I guess? How'd you get started? With um, wow, well, it was about four years ago, I think. Uh, it kind of just started. Really, really small. Mm -hmm. um, there was like one or two pieces floating around on the internet. And uh, one of my buddies, said you should do this because you could draw it. I was a cake decorator at the time and so I tried it and I, didn't, I really didn't believe it could work you know what I mean you could just paint sure. on cards so I just tried it and then from there it just kind of was a casual thing you know I do it for my friends and whatnot and uh, it just kind of blew up from there so now this is pretty much what I do. What'd you start with? Like what kind of styles or? Um, I mean every every alterer starting out should definitely start with extended art. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you great practice at color matching and knowing how thick to keep your paint. Sure. So. Uh, we've got loaded in a few images. One of the ones we have is one of your extended art Jace memory adapts, cool. which yep. really well done job. Uh, thank the you, background, thank you. light blue, all kinds of stuff. But one of the things you've become really well known for is a lot of the unique things you do with cards. Which, yeah. Uh, <laughs> some very novel, I don't even know how to say it. Like it, it is an alteration, but sometimes it's like completely new art uh, right, concepts yeah. even. Like totally Absolutely. new takes and on the and, yeah, and that's really one of my favorite things to do, mm -hmm. is to make something completely original. Um, because I, I mainly cater to uh, EDH players, Q, and they want to express yeah. themselves in a way that nobody else has this card, you know what I mean? So they're the only ones with it. And it's just, it's a great way to just sit down and I can just paint whatever I want. <laughs> so it's it's really good. Well, the first thing I think you became really well known for was the blueprints. Yes, style. the blueprints. I, yeah, I yeah. honestly haven't Absolutely. seen anyone else really doing those, and you do it quite well. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and throw up a ratchet bomb, which is yep. one of the more fitting ones, and just yeah. talk about what, what gave you the idea for the, the blueprint. Where did it start? Well, honestly, I when I first started out, you kind of have to put stuff on eBay to get known, sure, right? Sure, yeah. So, one of the best things to put on eBay is Sensei Savani Town. <laughs> <laughs> so I did so many of those, and coming up with original ideas for a new top every day was getting difficult. Um, so, you know, I would just search on the on the internet, you know, artifacts and, and things like that and get ideas. And uh, I just thought of making a blueprint of a Sensei Stevani top, and then from there it just kind of grew. Sure. Now it's, you know, my, like my signature yeah. style. Wow, that's so. actually crazy. I have noticed you have a lot of tops, but I never yeah. really thought about, like, it's got to be one of the easier cards to get a hold of and sell Absolutely. at the same it's, time. Yeah. It's fairly cheap. Everybody needs one. Yep. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's played in multiple formats. Um, so it's, it's, it's just a good general card to alter, especially when you're first starting out. Uh, another card I'm going to go ahead and throw up here is a Demir Signet, which is, it's a pretty, like, classic design. I think, you know, you've got just a very yeah, basic, very simple, like, binary, yep. simple, but it's a new spin on the art. Like, you basically just came up with your own idea of what a Signet would look like. Yeah. With and a I, space backdrop, I think. Absolutely. Right? It's one of my favorite things to do is is when people just give me a card and say, do whatever you want. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Again, I could just be completely original. And this card is actually uh, a set of four, I believe, artifacts that all have a similar space theme. Oh, okay. So, yeah, very it's cool. very, very fun. Do you do a lot of, like, themed pieces with connections? Like, I know some people bring, up, like, a lot of ultras. I think I've seen on your page, like, some dual lands that were, like, uh, a mural kind of style. Yep, yep. And they, what are yeah, some I've more done pieces done Several like dual lands that, different times, different times of the day and uh, different season and seasons and things like that. One of the things that I really like to do is getting two or three cards together sure. and making a connecting image. <laughs> so when, when they get their combo pieces all set up, they can set them all side by side and be like, well, what's up? You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, it's definitely a really good way to paper deck is having all your combo pieces connect through artwork. Sure. And I think personally one of the most interesting styles I've seen you start doing is, I don't know what you call it, I think of it as kind of like a grunge or <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, a, yeah. like well, scroll like even, I don't yeah, know, like yeah. it, it looks very ancient. Uh, we're going to throw up, I think we have Skull Clamp, which yes. uh, is one of the first ones I saw, 
but you've done a, a number of them now. Mm -hmm. So, an, again, like very original and unique. Where did that one start? <laughs> right, so the skull clamp is actually one of my favorite pieces of this style. And I wanted to do a take on the blueprint style, but make it more like, like you said, an ancient blueprint. And that's actually what I nicknamed the style. And, and from there, it's now been known as the, yeah, it's now been known as the Da Vinci style. Oh, okay. Um, I, I so like it, is, it is very similar to Da Vinci style art. Um, and that's just where it stemmed from was the blueprints. I wanted to make more, a more organic look instead of a more, you know, geometrical, straight line. I wanted to do more, you know, freestyle. Yeah, I, I really like how it sort of removes the frame of the card, but also like at the same time communicates mm -hmm. the basic setup of the design of the card. You know, like name, casting cost, like yeah. text box. You even do like the reminder text colored a little yep. differently. It's a nice touch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, another thing I see you doing, not a lot of altars are doing, and I think it's a great idea, is your own tokens. Absolutely. You have a wide variety of them. They're yes, high quality they're growing, stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank like you very much. Laminated. Uh, yeah, nice it's colors. Like. Yeah, it's really important for me to, to bring a quality product to the table. Um, so I wanted to laminate them, and that way, I mean, you can write the power and toughness with a dry erase marker, wipe it off, you know, and sure. it's going to last a long time. So when when you spend money for those tokens, you're going to have them forever, you know what I mean, yeah. until you don't use them anymore, I guess they end up in the box. <laughs> but. <laughs> but, and it's a good way for me to, uh, to do my own thing completely, you know, I... My art style is very cartoony, mm -hmm. so with these tokens, I can literally just express my style of art. What you want that token look like? Yep, exactly. So you've got you've had like a first wave or even two. I think you've been adding to it as you go. Do you have like yep. some planned ones we can look forward to already? Or? Um, I think the next one is going to be a goat. Ooh. I've had many requests because of the trading post, yeah. I believe. Um, so I think that's my next one. So at each event. People look at the tokens, they're like, well, why don't you have this token? Sure. So I, I you know, I kind of survey how many people say, why don't you have this token? And I think this time it's going to be the GOAT. All right, so if you're looking <laughs> for GOAT tokens, goat tokens. you don't think the M13 one is quite your style, soon enough you'll be able to get an Eric Clark GOAT token. Well, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and let you get back to your booth. Yes. We're going to get back to the tournament. Awesome. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you very much.